I'm starting with the petal sponge loaded with a pastel split cake and I'm just going to press that over my eyebrow and down onto my eye to create the kitty ears. It's a really, really easy way to get that shape. Then I'm going to line it up horizontally under my eye and I'm just going to pat and press the color in. You're going to see I rotate the sponge back and forth. I'm not getting all the colors down at once. I'm pressing the tip down and then rolling onto the edge to get that uh, periwinkle color down as well. You do not have to get every color down at once when you are doing sponge work. You want to rotate and get different colors placed down at different times. I believe this uh, cake is fairy floss, but I will be sure to link it down below. So I'm going to do the same on the other side and then start on the muzzle. Trick here is to have the child open their mouth so you do not get white on their bottom lip. It's just less to clean up. I did load the opposite side of my sponge here with white and I am just patting on the white to create the muzzle shape and then taking it up and around my nose and then up in between my ears of the kitty cat, of course. <laughs> um, I, I do like loading the other side with white because then I have less sponges I'm using on each kid. So you can see I just loaded the opposite side and then the other side has my color on it and I can switch back and forth and blend this. This allows me to use one sponge per child and then one sponge is going in my dirty bag opposed to two. The only downfall is it's a little messy and I'll show you my fingers. They, uh, they end up covered in paint here, but, but I'm using less sponges. Something to think about when doing full face designs. Think about a heart shape in the center of the face. So if I drew a heart going down to the bottom lip, that's where I want my full face design. Just because it's a full face design does not mean I have to take it to the edges of the face. So just something to think about. So I decided my cat ears weren't as wide as I normally do them. So I went ahead and added some white to create an inner ear for my cat ears and make them wider. And sorry, my camera keeps slipping out of focus. Hopefully it doesn't happen too much. So I went ahead and added that inside part of the ear so that it'll look like my ears are facing out. And I've taken a nice dark turquoise for the line work here. You can see I started on a thin line and went thicker, but if that's hard for you to do or you're heavy handed, start thicker and end at a tip. That can help if you're having trouble with your line work. So now I'm going to create the ear so that it's pointed out and I'm going to pull what you can think of almost like a pointed oval to create that turned out ear shape. I'm going to do the same on the other side and I am starting on the tip of my brush and then pushing down and tip and then going down a little bit thicker. I'm just going to pull those lines down a little bit because I can. And now I'm just going to do tufts of hair on the center of my forehead. This cat is more similar to how I do them on the job at festivals. It is very, very quick. When it comes to your line work for cats, you can do teardrops or you can um, just do a straight line over as well. Usually I end up doing kind of these connected little triangles. It's super fast and mimics hair and I can do a cat in a couple minutes on the job. So you can see I started the kind of tuft of hair at the corner of my eye out a little bit. It's almost like starting with a larger triangle and then tapering it down. And then I do a few teardrops so that I don't have a hole from the corner of my eye to the ear. And now I do the muzzle line going up on one side. And then typically I'm just going to move right to the nose. I don't always mimic one line from the other side to the other because it's not as efficient. I move from one side of the face to the other instead. So cat noses, as I always say, start a little bit lower. They're not bulbous and round like dog noses. So keep them lower on the nose. And then I do a line down and a triangle and I have a pretty distinct of Cupid's bow. So every time I do this, I think it always looks sloppy on me. I don't think it looks as sloppy on other people. Um, and then I did some dots and I really hated them. And I don't know why I did that. And my cat just meowed. I hope you guys can hear that in the video. <laughs> um, yeah, I never do dots. I don't know why I did that. So I just filled it in with some lines and covered them up. 
And then you can add as much detail here as you want, or you can be done, which is the beauty of this. So I added a few lines on the ears, just like little tufts of hair, and then I decided to fill in the bottom lip. I always do kitty teeth. And then if you have time, you can add some white highlights. So I went in and really am almost creating low lights um, under my turquoise line work with the white. And I do like this element. I think it brightens up the line work a little bit and adds a nice uh, dimension. But as you guys know, I always say when it comes to like festival work or birthday party, you know, designs when you have 10 kids that want cats, would I do this step on the job? Maybe not. So as always, skip what you do not have time for. The nice thing about this design, though, is that you can add more or take away. So here you can see I'm doing my highlight and I'm starting in the middle and then pulling the line back down from the middle. And that's a good trick if you're heavy handed with your line work because you tend to not mess up as much and you still get that nice variance of a thick to thin line. So now trick with the whiskers, instead of going straight out like a pointed straight line, curve them down and start them in different spots. And then also do some longer whiskers and some shorter whiskers. And you're going to get a little bit more of a realistic look without that much effort. And I do love to use a very, very thin liner brush for this because it gives you that wispy, whimsical look of whiskers. And then I'm going to add some to the little tuft of hair I did on the inside of the ears as well. And then since I'm doing this on myself and I didn't have any makeup on to begin with today, I am just doing a little bit of an accentuated cat eye and some thin black eyeliner. And then I decided that I should probably do a light outline on my teeth so they looked like they were a little bit more part of the design and not just floating. And I'm also going to outline my bottom lip. I do love doing glitter lips for cats as well if I have time. And then of course you can also spray the entire design with glitter, which just makes it uh, really stand out and shine. If you liked this video, then please subscribe to my channel. If you haven't already, hit the thumbs up button and give me a like because it helps me out a lot and it allows me to continue to create free content for you guys, which I love doing. If you would like to get notified when I upload a new video, then ring the bell as well and you will get notifications. Thank you so much for watching. Please let me know if you have any questions down below. And if there are looks you'd like to see me do next, I'm always happy to take suggestions. Thanks so much for watching, and I will see you guys in my next video.